time to return to book reviews once again. This time I'm taking a look at Sword of a Kaigen. This is one of the two, practically three, um, Sword and Laser book club picks that they've covered since the last of the videos I've done on Sword and Laser. Now, I'm not going to be covering their July book pick because that book pick tends to head a little more heavily on the sort of shock, gross-out horror side of thing, and that's not my cup of tea. I do appreciate some good body horror. I like me and my David Cronenberg. I enjoy the body horror in Akira, as you will have heard at this point. We talk about it in the Akira podcast. And I enjoy um, Junji Ito and Uzumaki and that sort of thing. But, like, particularly when it comes to prose and that sort of stuff, it doesn't play out as well in a few, res in a few respects. So I'm putting that book aside for later. As far as sort of Kaigen itself goes, it's interesting looking at this in the context of having previously discussed Iron Widow, because Iron Widow is a is a book that exists because of an enemy, because exists because the author watched Darling and the Franks, looked at what it was trying to do regarding mecha piloting partnerships and gender roles and that sort of thing, and what I can do better. And I'd argue she did. That said, by contrast, sort of Kaigen feels much more like an anime in a lot of respects. The, like, the characters all have Japanese names, even though they are, the setting is not Japan. One of our viewpoint characters is Masuda, uh, right, Masuda Mamoru, teenage boy, and the our other major viewpoint character is his mother, uh, Masuda Misaki. And we see Mamoru go to school, which is structured very much like a Japanese high school, albeit one in a rural environment. Uh, we see the household from Misaki's perspective, which is very much a very traditional, or meant to, to feel like a traditional Japanese household, particularly one from an aristocratic family. Um, the household includes a dojo, which is described as such, um, as opposed to, so make sure I get the spelling correct, As opposed to say, Dao Cheng, which is the term that is used uh, if I from a casual um, or or the Kun, sorry, as a training hall for or I think I'm reading it correctly as Kun. Um, For a um, or Guan. Unfortunately, they don't give me a, an audio reference in on the Wikipedia page for the correct term. Um, but for a martial arts school. So, like, you know, they're using the Japanese terms for things, um, not Chinese, not Korean, not Thai, no other Asian language, um, not Vietnamese, none of that. Malaysian. So, like, we're getting a very heavy Japanese focus with the environment, um, and there's a big focus early on for the fact that the main character practices the family martial arts style of sword fighting, um, and that the family has specific, basically, key techniques that they use to do special attacks. It's, it's you read this having watched a fair bit of, say, Shonen Battle anime, and you see immediately in your head the Shonen Battle anime that could almost exist focused on Mamoru. That said, um, partway through the book, the point of view, for reasons I'm not going to get into for because spoilers, shifts exclusively to the perspective of Misaki, 
which is something I did not expect initially, but is a good choice. Um, I appreciated having this character be the main character, be, be, become into the fore as the main point of view character over the course of the story, with us seeing her relations with her um, husband, her other children, um, other members of the household, and that sort of thing. So on the one hand, all this was familiar enough that in a lot of ways, I was very, very easily able, sort of, to find my footing. Except the book basically does the equivalent of tossing loose floorboards in or steps, rotted steps into the story at various points, which throws you off. And a lot of them is due to to use a TV tropes term, and I don't like using TV tropes names, terms as criticism, but in this case, it works. There is a TV trope called calling a rabbit a Sami. The idea being is you are to make your world seem more fantastic, whether it's science fiction or fantasy or any sort of other world, parallel world fiction, to give something from something from our world a name that is not the name from our world and requiring the audience to that into it. Now, there's good ways to do this, and there's bad ways to do it. The good way to do it is the way J.R.R. Tolkien does with, say, Lord of the Rings, where there are plenty of trees and plants, and food dishes, uh, and units of measurement that are used that are from our world and are very familiar. Even if they're an archaic unit of measurement, they're one that we've probably encountered before, like league, um, or fathom, or that sort of thing. So we are, we are they're using terms that we have had some knowledge of, that the reader will have had some knowledge of to some degree or another. Um, and so even if it's not something that's they're intimately familiar with, it's something to go, okay, I, I get this. By contrast, Sword of Kaigen uses a lot of words that are unique to the setting for stuff like units of measurement that doesn't, that work well and throws me out of the story. I get to use an example from um, Lord of the Rings. Where Tolkien puts in the, the new words is plants, animals, um, malorn leaves, that sort of thing. By contrast, character in an early chapter of Sword of Kaigen is asked, hey, was just told, hey, you need to be, we need to be in class when, and then gives a unit of measurement for the setting, a time unit of time measurement. And now as a reader, I go, how long is that? Is, do they, is, do they have a bunch of time? It's like, oh, you have an hour, no sweat. Is it a unit of time that is not urgent, but so you need to get the let out? Like, oh, you have half an hour. We have 15 minutes to get to the classroom from the, from after putting your street shoes in the locker and picking up your um, inside shoes. Okay, that uh, that's, that's that shows they have to hurry, but they're not like they're they're behind schedule and they they need to rush. But we're not late. Or is like, hey, you got seconds. You are in trouble. You are almost certainly going to be standing out in the hallway with a couple buckets of water. And in and you they have the information in the glossary in the back of the book. However, I also read this digitally because the physical copy of the book is very hard to get a hold of. And a limited, very nice print run doing the kind of fancy thing that um, Fourth Wing did with like uh, printed art on the um, pages and that sort of thing. All fancy stuff. But that print copy of Sword of Kaigen is out of print and hard to get a hold of, but it's available digitally, easy to get a hold of there. But the problem with reading a book digitally like this is flipping to the back of the book where the glossary is, is a problem. Now you could, depending on your um, book platform and how attentive you are about this sort of thing, use hyperlinking to put a link to the first occurrence of a word or when a time unit measurement shows up. So you click on it, it pops up or flips you back to the right section of the book to, hey, this unit of measurement means they have... Um, 15 seconds to get to class. Then you flip back and everything's fine. They didn't do that. And it makes for 
an obnoxious read. It's not a rough read. This is no point where I feel like they are roughing the reader by having you go through some really nasty stuff that's unnecessary to the plot. It's just something that feels somewhat disrespectful to the reader in the me in the context of the medium of the work that they are partaking in. That creating a situation where you to proceed in the story, you have to flip the back of the or not to proceed the story, but to get a better understanding, you have to keep flipping to the back of the book, which again works fine. The print book doesn't work as well with the digital copy. Now this is something where Subsequent books could fix this, could have this material in the back of the book. Um, and still, but then have those hyperlinks and that sort of thing, or even use less of these special time, special jargon. Like, okay, we're just going to use regular time units and not worry about that. And we will use unique terminology for measurement in places where it is unique for the setting for example characters who are uh have powers of the um the the, the theonite like, i remember just constantly like oh theonites the people who have the ability to control superhuman superhuman abilities to control the control of elements um and that sort of thing like all like all of that level that works. Keep that jargon there because it's, it's critical. The setting is something that's unique and it is describing something that is unique to the setting. On the other hand, again, you don't need to use jargon for distance. You want the audience to understand fundamentally how far something is. Um, even now, even if you're using potentially a unit of measurement that the local audience, that your domestic audience wouldn't necessarily be familiar with, like like you're not in the United States using the metric system instead of imperial measurements in the US. Still, like the audience can get a general idea of okay, I, I have a rough, even if they use imperial measurement, go, okay, I got I think I know how much a meter is. I think I know how much a kilogram is. Uh, I think I know how much a kilometer is. Um, so I can figure out, so I get kind of rough guesstimate in my head. How far is that? That seems pretty, that sounds pretty far as opposed to it, like, I love Star Trek. I have no bloody clue how long a far a kilocam is. And I don't think they've ever explained how far a kilocam is. Um, so that, like that doesn't work great. Otherwise I enjoyed the book. I think my probably biggest disappointment is less the issues with mutants of measurement and that sort of thing, because that part has a kind of able to power through it. The story itself, the characters, the relationships are wonderful. It's the fact that there's the story sets up a bunch of other stuff going forward. And we don't, and we're not getting sequels for this, at least not for a long time. The author has expressly said that she, that author ML Wang has said that she doesn't want to do sequels right now. She feels that she has bitten off more than she can chew with her development of the setting. Indeed, the other YA novels that are in the universe that this is set in have been pulled from publication. You cannot buy them in um, digitally anymore. Um, any print copies that are out there are the existing ones that have been printed. They're only available to use, and they are scarce now. So... We are waiting for further developments on this for when the author feels up to writing them. I look forward to the time when that happens. I think, I hope that she has, when she returns to this, she has learned and developed more on the writer so that otherwise, like the unit of measurement thing, it's an error. It's an unforced error, but it's an error that I can see from an overambitious author doing. Um, particularly what they're doing a second world or other worlds work of fiction where they feel they need to do this to develop the universe further when you don't necessarily need to. And hopefully when she returns situation where she feels more comfortable with the setting and her craft as a writer, where she can go, no, I don't need to make up units of measurement for time or distance or that sort of thing. 
the that part of the world i can use terminology that is familiar to the to the world of the reader and let the new and unique jargon be focused on stuff that is core and unique to the setting and let that matter stuff like again the terms like theodite or social classes like coronu that stuff perfect chef kiss love it keep doing that the rest of it less so so that's where i'm at i will have a link in the doobly doo as to where you can pick up a digital copy of the book um and i do hope it in the not too distant future that we will get another installment in the series Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Tossing me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.